Hello, I'm Ryan Reuter in the Department of Animal and Food Sciences at Oklahoma State University. I'd like to talk to you today about the stalker cattle industry in the United States and how it fits into our beef production system. If you aren't familiar with this term, you might be asking, what is a stalker? A stalker, also called a stalker calf or stalker cattle, is a bovine that is weaned from its mother but hasn't yet begun a finishing program in a feed yard. It is an in-between stage. In this stage of production, cattle are intended to grow by gaining weight, developing more mature skeletal, digestive, and immune systems in preparation for finish, finishing in a feed yard. Typically, calves are weaned at about seven months of age at about 400 to 500 pounds, uh, say 200 to 225 kilograms. Some of these calves go directly into a feed yard, but many don't. If these weaned calves don't go into a feed yard, we call them stalker cattle, and they might be grown on forages for three to six months, and then put into a feed yard when they weigh about 800 to 900 pounds, or 360 to 410 kilograms. Here are some typical stalker cattle grazing warm season perennial grasses. These are also typical stalker cattle, this time grazing wheat pasture. Wheat is a cool season annual and is a very high quality forage. A key feature of stalker cattle production is that it is typically forage based. Stalkers in many cases graze pastures, although in some systems they eat primarily harvested forages such as silage or hay. In most cases, forages that are better than average in quality because the type, this type of cattle require a good quality forage to grow efficiently and cost effectively. These are some examples of stalker production systems in the United States. The winter wheat grazing enterprise uh, is very common in western Oklahoma, western Kansas, and parts of west Texas. It's also very common in uh, the Kansas Flint Hills, uh, extending into the Osage uh, county of Oklahoma. It's very common in that area to graze stalker cattle uh, in the summertime on pretty high quality native range pastures that are often burned. Uh, stalker grazing in the summer is quite common in the high plains areas of New Mexico, Texas, and Colorado. Uh, a, a common stalker system in Nebraska and Kansas in farming areas is grazing crop aftermath in the fall after harvest. Uh, usually this is corn, it can also be sorghum uh, stubble fields. Stalker cattle are grazed very commonly in the, in, on cool season pastures in the winter across the southeast and the delta states. And back, backgrounding programs which often use har harvested forages are scattered across the Appalachian, the Corn Belt, and the Northern Plains states. So stalker cattle production is widely distributed uh, across the United States and is an important part about of the industry. role of the stalker cattle industry. And I'd like to frame this quick discussion by asking a question. What do you think the purpose of the cow-calf industry is? Many things may come to your mind. If you're a cow-calf producer, you might think of things like the, to raise calves, or to make money or similar ideas. These are true, uh, but in the big picture, in the grand scheme of things, the purpose of the cow-calf industry could be thought of as to convert grass to human food. This is what the calves are for and this is how we can make money. And it's really what matters to society at large. In a similar way, we could ask, what is the purpose or role of the feedlot industry? Some people might say to finish calves so that they have enough marbling, etc. But again, in the big picture, the role of the feedlot industry is to convert excess grain to human food. The excess part is an important distinction. Most grains are viable human food, but we tend to produce more grain than people can or want to eat. So the conversion of the excess grain into a different product is the benefit to society and how we make money. 
in the feedlot industry. What then is the role of the stocker industry? Well, it's actually a little complicated, or at least multifactorial. The stocker industry certainly contributes to food production similarly to the cow-calf and the feedlot industry, but the stocker industry is more flexible than either of those segments. A wide range of cattle can be used uh, as stockers. Stocker programs can be as short as 60 days or as long as 200 days or more. This helps even out the spread um, or even out or spread the supply of beef over the year because most calves are weaned in the fall. Calves can be staged or inventoried in stocker programs until there is space available in feed yards. Stockers can use grazed forages, harvested forages, byproduct feeds or grains, all in various combinations, all depending on the market price. In this way, the stocker segment functions to help mitigate feed price extremes. If grains are very expensive compared to forage, producers will tend to keep stockers longer and use, use the more cheap forage. When grains are cheap, stocker programs get shorter and might incorporate those grains uh, into the gain programs. Dr. Peel's excellent article describes all of these aspects and more about the stocker cattle industry. Uh, much of this preceding discussion was lifted from this publication and I highly encourage you to go check out uh, that, that publication. Let's talk about the scope of the stocker industry. This chart shows the inventory of feeder cattle outside of feedlots. This might be the best estimate of stocker cattle we can get. You can see that over time the stocker industry is shrinking. Uh, this is directly related to the de decrease in the number of cows. But there are still about 25 million stocker cattle in the United States. Not an insignificant number. Stocker cattle tend to concentrate in certain parts of the U.S. Uh, this map shows the stocker ratio, which is the number of feeder cattle outside of feedlots divided by the number of cows that calved that year. The U.S. averages about a 75% ratio, meaning that 25% of calves born in a calendar year are in a feedlot by January 1st. So most of our calf crop goes into a stocker program. Notice that Kansas and Oklahoma have stocker rates, uh, stocker ratios well above 100. This indicates that stockers are imported into these states in the winter, principally to graze wheat pasture. Iowa also imports stockers in the winter. Montana and Florida are major exporters of calves in the fall and you can see that by the low stocker ratios in those states. Here's a similar graphic showing that the Southern Plains is a major center for stocker cattle production in the wintertime. Again, this is related to wheat pasture grazing. We can talk about the feedlot industry as well and it makes for an interesting comparison to stocker production. If you aren't familiar, the feedlot phase uses cattle after they are weaned. Cattle are confined, usually in open dirt pens, but in some cases are housed in barns that are bedded with straw or other materials. In this segment of the industry, cattle are fed grains so that they grow, but also finish, meaning they gain body fat so that the beef they produce will have the characteristic flavor of grain finished beef. Cattle feeding is big business and efficiently produces high quality, high protein beef from excess grain production. Here's an example of what a feedlot looks like from overhead. The dark areas of the pens are mounds where cattle can catch a breeze and rest on a dry slope. You can see the pens face a feed alley in the front where feed is delivered to the bunks, and a drover's alley in the back where cattle are moved in and out of the pen as needed. Here's a nice set of feeder cattle in a feed yard.
Here's a question. How many finished cattle are slaughtered in the United States each year? The answer is about 30.6 million head of cattle, finished cattle, are slaughtered each year in the United States. That equates to about 26 billion pounds of beef production. The feedlot industry is concentrated in two major areas in the United States, the high plains of the Texas Panhandle up through western Nebraska and the Corn Belt of eastern Nebraska and Iowa. Several of the other areas of the United States have smaller pockets of feedlots, including California and Arizona, uh, parts of Idaho, South Texas, and some eastern states such as Michigan and Pennsylvania. The feedlot system also exists in other countries. Here we're showing Australia. Feedlots are common in parts of Canada, South America, South Africa, Indonesia, and other countries. This is an interesting map. I don't really want to give this group any more publicity or web hits, but they do have a pretty cool mapping function built into their website. If you uh, could check out this website, it, it'll, uh, it's pretty cool, the, the information that's available to you here. This is uh, showing you where um, confined animal production occurs, uh, where these operations are registered. In the United States, here we've got uh, all operations highlighted, but we can uh, just, for instance, just check out uh, layer hens, and we could change the census year down here as well. You could kind of see how this progresses over time, but we'll just look at uh, 2012. This is these are the counties where there are uh, high numbers of laying hens. You can also see where the broiler production is centered, obviously in the southeast. Uh, you can see hogs. Uh, here you can and see the hog uh, production in the United States and obviously centered in Iowa and the Corn Belt. Uh, these are where the dairy cattle are, California, Wisconsin, major areas for dairy production. And then here are cattle feedlots and you can see the concentration of the feedlot industry in those areas that we talked about, the Texas Panhandle up through Nebraska uh, and, and out through the Corn Belt. And then areas in California and Arizona, Idaho, South Texas, those are the areas where uh, feedlot production occurs. So to summarize, in this talk we've defined the stocker and feedlot industries, talked about the roles of each and why they exist. We've talked about the scope of these industries and where they're located. Review that information and think about what implications those facts may have related to your career and interest in the beef industry. And we'll see you next time.